as Zeri? Is that what they're well, planning to play? I don't I don't know whether that's necessarily that great. The Varus has been the go-to here for Viper in situations like this, but you know, Nautilus plus the uh, the Varus isn't an amazing combo in terms of what you could do later on in terms of poking and stuff like that. It's not gonna control the lane very well. And we'll pick up the Nautilus as a denial here. Yeah. And now, you know, we've seen Carrier play a ton of different champions here. Whenever a Senna gets locked in, Sion was buffed. Yeah. Orin is still, you know, decent. Um, we just have no idea. And they might keep that a secret for a very long time. As once again, Zayus will look to play around just having Perma Pryo in top with a range advantage. And this is what T1 oh. did. They, before, the old champion was Aatrox. It's like the meme where he's looking towards the, the hotter new top lane, the, the range champion. He's <laughs> like, ooh, Twisted Fate, though. That seems to have Perma Pryo. I'm going to blind this instead now. And. But they just allows them to play so much through bottom side here and keep the Senna lane safe. See if it's going to be a carrier pick here or if they're just going to keep that a secret for now. Yeah, I I do think that it's a bit weird that they uh, didn't decide to lock in something like the uh, the Rek'Sai because Rek'Sai Sejuani we've seen is so devastating. Uh, it's not even going to be the pick. It's the Zeri Nautilus lane that I was talking about earlier on. I'm not a huge fan of it. I think that uh, Zeri is so incredibly strong with Enchanters, but they needed to deny the Nautilus. Yeah. And uh, Viper is really good at Zeri. So I guess uh, I guess that's the angle that they're going to go for. Zeri can be deceptively strong in early to mid-game team fights, especially in the early game Senna uh, timeline. So if Viper just forces fights nonstop and eventually gets a few kills, has his Zeri moment, then I can see this composition really snowballing quite effectively before the late game happens, especially if you're considering the Twisted Fate angle here. Not a very tanky composition for the side of T1. As we will see that Talia denied. Love the Rek'Sai ban this time around. Adaptation yeah, into what was a very successful game there from Doran in our first. Baker's pool getting thinned out a little bit. The Azir is still available. Likely to be the R4 pick here for Zekker is what we'd be assuming. Assuming it's not banned, yeah. Um, I, per I personally like to see something else just because I feel with Sejuani you open up so many doors for Zekka's champion pool to really flourish. Um, but we'll just have to see what Hummer Life Esports are going to go for there because they didn't ban away the Azir themselves. They took away the Orn, of course, one of Carrier's favorites alongside the Senna. I think that Scion is probably the one that is likely to come through in and its place. You have, you know, the Yone pick here for Zekka potentially. You know, they have the Jack. Okay, that's taken away now. You have the Jax angle as well that Doran couldn't end up playing since T1 didn't pick it away. And I mean, I feel like if you lock Azir here, it doesn't feel amazing with the Sejuani, but it does, does still feel pretty powerful for those early to mid game team fights. And then you can still pick something for Doran in the top lane that pairs with this, like the Jax. As there's no way for T1 to pick that away anymore. They already locked in the Twisted Fate, they already have the Lee Sin picked up. So. There's a lot of different picks that Dory could play with uh, this this pick. As Faker is just once again going to go back to, well, I was going to say Corky, but he's going all in on scaling. I feel like this is a huge mistake to play uh, the Cassidy in here into this comp so strong in the mid game. Much rather see a Corky or an Aureli in Soul if you just want to slam down a late game scaling pick. I like this pick a lot more. That is uh, Graves being hovered right now for Carrier. Probably not going to be what is locked in. Uh, Cassante Senna. That is an option. Uh, the Scion is obviously what we were expecting. Um, but Cassante would be an interesting one. Um, still, Scion going to come through, of course, is just a brick wall uh, on that bottom side. Farms incredibly effectively as well in 1v2. That is likely where he is going to be. Can also just, uh, you know, end up doing some cool interactions with the Senna root. Ooh, where you just punt, punt a minion at the Zeri, lock her down. That was the old G2 special, if I remember correctly. Is just, there is the Jax that just, you were talking about. Yeah, just going to be the Jax here for Doran. And, you know, the Jax has been pretty decent into Twisted Fate. Obviously, the Twisted Fate outranges you, can, you know, stun you if, you know, the uh, you know, follow-up is coming through, like Peanut comes over. But it's really difficult to deal with Counter-Strike uh, when ganks do come towards the top side. And Owner will have to play a little bit towards bottom side, I think, uh, in the early stages of this game, just simply because eventually there's going to be all-in angles for the Zeri. The Scion pick makes it a little bit tougher, but if you don't end up getting a knock-up onto the Zeri, Zeri will just out-damage you. And early fights around Drake's become so incredibly hard to pilot here as T1 that I do really like this draft from Hanwa a lot. As Once again, you know, the Senna value is so high, but this time they didn't get it with a the Tomcatch, they didn't get it with the Nautilus, they didn't get the Orn. 
And Sion is kind of fourth best right now, and we knew it was coming, as you mentioned. The Smash and Poopy yeah. hanging out here to watch the games. There's my goat right there. <laughs> um, but I, I got to say, I think overall, the, the, the holes in the early game here for Hanwha, or sorry, for T1, I lean towards Hanwha once again in the second draft. I kind of agree. I do think that center is just like really, really strong and giving Carrier more power with all that extra gold on the Scion, even if it is, you know, a step below something like the Nautilus that we have seen find so much success. I think it is still a danger here. How will Life Esports have put themselves together a decent comp, but I'm looking at that top side, see whether that Jax can actually find some value against the Twisted Fate. Let's dive under the rift for game two. Uh, T1 fans are extraordinarily loud today. Um, we're not even on their side of Wall Park. I'm normally completely trolled by the fact, oh, I'm like, whoa, they're so loud, but that's because we're on their side. No, no, they're on the other side, and it was almost deafening. Well, there's also T1 fans on the Hanwha side, as it turns out. Uh -huh. <laughs> there's no rule where you have to, like, indicate your fandom, and then you can never sit on the other side, but... Uh, there's just so many T1 fans that that does happen. As uh, Karia is doing the dance here. I yep. don't know what to call that, but it's the correct skin. It is uh, a bit Pacific Rim vibe. Uh, I do like that, as he can become a choo-choo train, and that is the most important thing. Uh, I've never picked any Scion skin that wasn't that one, ever. Not I think once. I'm a, I'm a big Lumberjack fan. Um, I do really like the uh, Lumberjack skin, but it does, it is less cool um, when, because you don't turn into a train. Khan picked it like once or twice, I remember. Yeah, he uh, was a, on. he was a, he was a Lumberjack enjoyer. He played a lot of train sound as well, but <laughs> you know, he would occasionally do Lumberjack for you. I could, yeah. I could feel it was a definitely a shout out <laughs> to Atlas moment. Thanks, Khan, I appreciate it. Um, Karia did go on Sealed Spellbook, which is quite common on this pick, so there's some fun stuff you could do with early game control over dragons and stuff like that where, you can try to look for a smite fight into your favor, shore up some of the weaknesses this comp has around objective control early. Yep. Or packages become a big relevant thing that Faker can utilize. As now eight wins for Zekka on this Azir. I think he's really turned around his Azir play since 2022. You know, starting with Worlds. As yeah, Guma all time has never lost a game of Senna, yeah. including internationals. He's doing pretty well. As our carrier is taking a fair bit of damage, not going to find too much there with the Q as the response, but of course, not the end of the world. We've seen a lot of uh, Santa lanes get kind of abused in the early stages, and you just press Q a few times, and everything is kind of all right. I mean, T1 was kind of considered the Senna team. Like, they played Senna Wukong at MSI. Yeah. They just do whatever they want with it, but this is definitely going to be a comp that, that can run into issues here. As once again, owner's going to put the pressure onto Peanut here on Red Buff. Yeah, he is uh, going to interrupt the resonating strike quite nicely. There is Peanut, but still going to lose out on this trade pretty hectically. And the red buff going to lose interest. You can see Ona now moving on over. And Peanut will be able to sweep out the fact that uh, the Lee Sin is still in the area, but I don't think Peanut's going to be able to do too much about it. Might need to just move over to the other side. Is Eka down to 200 health here in the mid lane as well? Not going to be a whole lot of help with this battle in the jungle occurring. Yeah, Delight roaming. Okay, Hook gonna miss onto Faker here, as Delight is just going to protect his Azir. Uh, this is a very large wave. Um, my goodness, okay, well, owner is uh, up here towards his top side. Peanut gets on in there, just to try and grab some little rocks, but not gonna be able to get too much. And 13 to 17, the so early game advantage there. Quite large for owner. Yeah, so frustrating here for Doran, as Delight looks for another opportunity here. Yeah, another hook is gonna go wide. Doesn't um, flash for it or anything, but but the early game here for T1, once again, just playing around the fact that Owner is pushing towards red buff. He has the red buff advantage. Try to look for the, the three buff take there on the peanut. Comes over and he's like, well, I'm going to slow you. You can't actually win this fight. And even though it's an Azir versus Corky, the prio was Fakers. And Doran is obviously you know getting pushed in on, on, on the top lane by this Twisted Fate that T1 know exactly how much pressure they can put on with Owner. And both of his early games here, game one to two, has been really fantastic, giving T1 a lot of agency. And you can see already in the gold graph here, a significant advantage from his pressure alone with these winning lanes. Just T1 things. Yeah. Uh, Doran gonna cancel his back here, as you can see. Manages to get the cannon, as does Zeus, who is thinking about a cheetah recall himself. Doesn't have teleport, of course. And only level five, so no gating back to lane or anything like that. Peanut will be able to get himself some shellfish here towards the bottom side. And no big advantages, but 
decent amount of gold uh, over to T1 as, uh, you know, TF exists and stuff like that. The gamble are pretty good at making sure that money is in their favor. Yeah, that's a decent amount of that gold lead. A lot of the other parts, you know, just the, the farm advantage that owner has here in the jungle. As a cull was picked up here for Viper while uh, Delight was roaming. So he is going to have a really strong uh, mid game spike here fairly early. And even picking up the Shiv is going to make things a lot more comfortable for him. He can make a larger impact on the map with that before Guma, you know, can really deal with those waves. So Honda Life Esports will have a lot of power around that window of time once the cold completes here, even if he doesn't have his Zeri moment in terms of kills. Yep. Do like this purchase quite a bit. As Doran went fleet footwork again here on this Jax. Delight is just not, he's a he's playing River Nautilus at this point. Owner gonna start off the bubs. I'm pretty sure Delight knows what's going on. Peanut is going to dive out as the hook comes out of nowhere. Thanks for that one, Jonah Strong, for the jump scares. They do find the permafrost onto Owner. The flashes come forward, and there is first blood going to the Sejuani. The punishment and the long con by Delight. That was really well played. Even though the hook misses, he still has the root. He's still got his passive, and he will still help secure that kill. Goes over to Peanut here. Now Zayas under a little bit of pressure, signed to ult. Oh, he's going to get interrupted as well on the Destiny as Doran's going to jump his way out. Teleport going to come on in here as it's Carrier making his way up towards this top side. It means he's not going to be there in the bottom lane to farm things out. Viper getting a bit of respite. And I actually really like that Humble Life are doing this, right? Because Zeri is notably a very good farmer under yeah. the turret, right? Especially when you consider that it's just a Scion that's pushing in. There's not really a strong engage. There's no way, there's a way to push the wave to the turret, but there's no way to then punish Zeri as she sits on the turret. So they're kind of flipping the narrative here in terms of the, you know, big roaming support often being the Senna, so to speak, because she's not farming, trying to get value around the map. It's actually in this case, the Nautilus on the farming Zeri side that's actually making those big plays proactively here as Delight purchases a control ward, allows himself to stay hidden here. He knows it guaranteed. Goes over to this brush here. And even though Delight's hook misses, they end up following up, obviously, and Delight can end up getting the root here. Good flash there from owner. The timing, fantastic. Will force out a follow-up flash there from Delight. But uh, he does ultimately still go down. Really yeah. big play here from Hano Life to bring the gold back even. Still, no big advantages. Of course, uh, Twist of Fate just making it really hard to find a gold lead. Still, first word, going to Peanut isn't end of the world for T1, and they still have all of those scaling options. I mean, it's it's Senna, Corky, and Scion. All three of these champions scale to infinity. It is just kind of nutty. Corky, not so much, but like just gets so incredibly powerful. It kind of feels like that. As Kumushi coming on over to grab some souls in the mid lane. Peanut just stealing away the Gromp here towards the top side of the map. 50% health. And now Zeus is potentially in trouble. Finds a gold card onto Peanut, who will throw out the ulti and eventually flashes his way out. Still, Owner is able to lock down the kill. Now, Doran, he's going to get taken down as well. The gold card is going to connect, and he's not going to be able to get the follow up. And T1, they punish hard. Doran's typing, got a plate worth uh, in the chat <laughs> oh, right no. now. As that was not it, unfortunately, for Hotwell Life Esports. A huge botch on the dive as the gold card is used on the Sejuani. Smart call there from Zayas. Obviously the Counter-Strike would have otherwise denied it. And Peanut takes too much aggro. They know Owner is rotating up. Peanut flashes still, so two flashes down and they fail to play. Zayas ends up being the biggest benefactor. And a very awkward moment here for Hanwipe Esports. One step forward and two steps back. Yeah. And it's a little bit of a worry as Control Ward in the back of the pit here. T1 knows that this Drake has been started up, but it looks like Humble Life Esports will be able to lock this one down. So once again, first Drake going over their way as Doran is here on this top side, doesn't have his teleport available. The Twisted Fate still on top side of the map as well as Ona going to safeguard his way in and he's just going to steal it away. It's highway robbery from this Lee Sin. He's even able to interrupt Peanut who does get the permafrost. Viper now looking for an opportunity but the kickback is too good. Empress Divide also fantastic and the burst fire is there. Carrier going to get taken down into his zombie form and he's going to find no value. And Wolf, are we certifying it? I'm going to certify it. I've got my stamp out right here and it's slamming it down on the table. And this is exactly what I'm talking about with this composition for Hanwha Life. It is so easy for them to win long-term skirmishes into T1's composition because there's no real strong front line. Yeah, you've got a buckler as 
support Scion or really farming Scion bottom side, but otherwise, you know, these early fights, the Zeri just has so much mobility as well. Don't make me watch it again. Yeah, oh dear. So Counter-Strike is out here onto the Jax, so that's why Stun's Pino takes an extra turret shot. Their owner is over here for the play. Zayas is like, thank you very much. We'll be able to grab that kill as well. So not even both kills going over to the Lee Sin as Delight is making things happen here once again. But look at Viper's positioning in this fight. As yeah, you got the dragon, but you priced yourself into this extended fight. And Viper's just sitting here full health going, yeah, okay, you can go on me, you're taking that Q into me, okay. But Senna can't do anything here, and Corky can't do anything either. Whoa. There's a lot of people here in this top lane. Sorry to interrupt. No, it's all right. We're going to see whether Peanut can actually try and get some sort of gank working as uh, in goes Doran, finds a counter strike onto two. Q connect here, but the dredge line, the depth charge, absolutely fantastic here from Delight. Still, there is the package delivered right underneath the turret. No one's gone down just yet, though. Another hook is going to connect as they're trying to juggle, and there is the kill going over to Delight. Zekka's coming up. Yeah, this is starting to get scary. These health bars are relatively low. But Zekka is kind of here by himself. So and he doesn't it, have ult. Yeah, it's not exactly a, uh, a kill opportunity. As, all right, Control Ward has been put down. And there is the Hex Flash over from Delight. Doesn't quite find the value. Shifting Sands gets Zekka out of dodge. As we're just back to laning. All right. Yep, everybody calm down. Everything's fine. Now, yeah. this is the, the Shiv spike I was talking about with Viper, where Caria on a uh, Scion, you know, is going to never die, but will never be able to deny play gold over, never going to be able to get back control of this bottom lane, won't be able to control mid lane either when Viper comes over there. So he needs to be able to make a larger impact, or Guma needs to start making larger impacts on his own. Otherwise, this area is just going to naturally scale up through this mid game. The center will be stronger later, arguably, depending on the game state. But well, right now, the Zeri feels like a goddess here across the rift. And the top side play, once again, the package gank. We saw it in game one, failed there. Fails here from some good plays from Delight there. Hanwha Life defend it. And now Faker is packageless. Doesn't get anything out of it. Really unfortunate. Also teleport down now on the Corky. <laughs> Zeka picks up that early Nasher's Tooth. And Hanwha Life really feeling quite nice with their position here after a few whoopsies in the early game. Yeah, I would say so too. Let's have a look at the replay to this top lane fight as well. Doran starts it off pretty nicely with that Counter-Strike. Yeah, starts off with a nice Counter-Strike. The ult comes through here from Hina. Faker does still commit to this play here onto Doran. And even though Delight takes a bunch of package damage here, it's still early. Look at this hook from Delight. Keeps Zayas under the turret for one extra shot. And that is the end of that. Even with those low health bars there, Faker is not going to stick around. I was thinking maybe there would be some action as Delight and Sejuani up here. I don't know why I decided to say Delight and Sejuani instead of Delight and Peanut, but I did. It was just uh, what I decided to go with. <laughs> as uh, we do have some uh, bubs going down. And we should be able to stick around for a few of them. Void Mites might be available here for T1 in a few moments, but I don't think they're going to try and go for the final one. So Harm Life Esports should be able to get that if they would like it. Peanut is back in base, though, so they'll just leave that one in the pit for the next couple of moments. And should be only three going over to T1. Yeah, this is going to be Viper just coming in here looking all for right. the all-in. He's just going to ult, and he's going to make sure that uh, Carrier turns into a train, and he is going to get out of there. I feel like that's pretty worth, because without the ultimate from Carrier in this next Drake fight, you know, it's going to be a little bit more awkward for them to fight this one out. As Faker... Use the package top side there. We'll see what he can purchase on his way back. Didn't end up buying the Hexbreaker this time around, so slowing his build down significantly this time around in this second game. Just finishes Muramana. Frozen Heart is done for Caria as well, as this fight is really huge for T1 if they could somehow miraculously win it. I just don't know if they even want to opt in. I mean, there's just so many great ways to shut down this early Senna right now on Hanwha Life's side, and I think opting into this and losing another fight to this area is just opting into losing this second game. Yeah, owner is on vision, remember, as Zekker is just going to deliver him to the rest of Hanwha Life, and Viper is now on a killing spree. It's a disaster for T1. Yeah, that's a third kill for the Zeri, and that's, that means no dragon contest here whatsoever. They can get the Herald in exchange as they do start moving towards this top side. Maybe they want to get something uh, like a Jax as well, as Doran does have Flash. He has his ultimate available to see if they can get him. If he just walks it out, they can get the turret here. Yeah, and uh, Doran's spidey senses were tingling. I just don't know whether it's going to be enough. Zekka's TP is coming up in just a second as well. I don't know if they can really stick around and try to force this. Yeah, and in fact, Viper was moving up as well. The ganking Zeri, uh, the most unexpected of gankers. 
as he is now just going to shove this wave towards the turret. Th this has been, like, the most unfettered Zeri ever. Yeah. Five, he's just come into team fights, taken kills. Orcs, pay attention, please. Uh, but Viper has just kind of had a free laning phase and even found some skirmish kills and taken advantage of those two. And, and it's a Azir and it, or it's a Zeri that you're laning into as the Scion, as they are going to try to come over here and contest this Herald now. Hanwha Life, they win this one. It's pretty much lights out. And T1 just walk away. And that is the concern of this accelerated Zeri. And I mentioned this in draft. I feel like the Scion can't really do what a Nautilus can do. Scion is kind of an ult button and a very large Q that if you stand in, you know, he makes an impact in the fight. If you don't, he doesn't do what Anolis does. Anolis has a massive ultimate that's gonna hit multiple people. It's targeted, he can Q multiple times in a fight. The Scion is now just sitting on a turret against a Shiv Zeri or a Nasher's Tooth Azir and just getting beaten on. And Karia has made very little impact. Meanwhile, Delight, 100% kill uh, contribution here, 100% uh, participation on this Nautilus. He's everywhere all the time and Hanwife's early game has just been going swimmingly. Yeah, I feel like Delight is, uh, he, he took the All Pro vote personally or something like that. He really wants to tell everyone that he is in fact still an absolute god on engage supports and he is demonstrating that here today this on moment. the Nautilus in back-to-back -back games. And yeah, Zeka just says, no, 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 you're coming over here. Yeah, that was just a really good call with the ward that they had there on the Krugs. A little bit of greed there as owner was hoping his team would maybe rotate over and collapse on a slower neutral fight there with the Corky. And he's just a victim of vision. Yeah. And this is going to be the mid turret going down before the charge even happens. And so now Shelly going to keep that health bar as Doran does have his counter strike. And it's going to be difficult here for uh, Ona to find too much. Does just kick him away as Faker trying to convince Peanut that he is not welcome in his jungle. Peanut probably not really going to listen to that one too much as Viper tanks casual turret shot. Delight now looking to come on over. There are a lot of people towards the top side of the map, as you can see. Zeka has teleport, so if they want to continue to push this, they are going to have to be very cautious of this. He can both get this outer turret bottom side and make an impact here top side. There's that oh, TP. Yeah, and now the flash forward from Delight. He'll find the depth charge onto Gumiyushi, and this center is in a lot of trouble. Zeka going to fly on over, does find the Arise, and then the Sand Soldiers will finish the job. Doran actually getting the kill kind of big here as well that Jax in a side lane is very, very scary. And Viper just back to killing the minions. Viper's been playing this so well. He knows he can rotate between top and mid so easily. He, every single time there's a potential skirmish there, he's like, I'm so ahead of the curve. I'm so fed. I have runins, you know, at, at 16 and a half minutes. I will go up there and make an impact in this top side fight if you guys want to continue to force the issue. T1 trying to get a cross map there, knowing there's no one who could stop this is your push. They're like, well, we have to get something here, but the turret is even so healthy that you really have to question what's the angle here for, for pushing Guma. It's not like he's getting plate gold or anything here. Zeka had teleport. They should have been able to track that. And T1 falling apart a little bit here on the map. And yeah, the game state is definitely not good for them, but it feels like it's getting worse all the time as the Scion has still been completely invisible this game. Yeah, the Scion and the Senna not really reaching the point where they're able to be that relevant. And with the acceleration from Viper, it is just so incredibly scary. That on top of the fact that it's Viper, right? Like, we just know that this guy is always just going to be good in a team fight. Could we be looking at exactly what I was saying before, where it's T1 falling down 0-2, as this might mean no, as Dawning Shadow is going to fly on over as well. And there goes the Azir. And now Doran, that is an unfortunate teleport. If ever I've seen one, as Karia with a celebratory face plant into the wall. Karia also flashing there. Very strange exchange, as he will be able to get uh, Doran's teleport in his flash as well, but... Okay, Hook is going to connect here as there's the ulti out from Viper. Faker now in a whole lot of trouble as the Piercing Darkness comes in, but the flash forward from Viper says no. And now the Mega Cone from Gumiushi still. Viper able to get these burst fires over, just dashes over the wall. There's the Extendo Beam, but good sidestep from Gumiushi still. That's, uh, that's going to put some fear in him. Yeah, it certainly will. I mean, now he's flashless, so the sidestep was good, but... If you're just watching how these skirmishes play out, every time T1 looks like maybe they got an edge, maybe they got an advantage, you look at the Summoner's, you look across the Rift, and you're like, well, not really. Viper's still the king of Summoner's Rift here in this second game. And Zayas, he ends up getting a big shutdown of gold there on that last play top side, but it doesn't necessarily ultimately matter that much as Doran is still Jacks in the side here. And now that he's shadowed, now that they've pushed the Senna away, he should be able to get this turret as well. 
We'll put Hanwa two turrets up on T1. A Fed Zeri and Azir getting closer to that Leandri's breakpoint here. I mean, this, plays like this, I think, are absolutely necessary. And this is why T1 is such a resilient team, despite deficits like the gold one they're in right now. They can make proactive plays. As Karia Pale flashes the wall ah, there, yeah. and that's why he ulted like that. And uh, it's a little bit rough as Faker gets caught here as well by Delight, who just feels like he is everywhere, man. It's a global Nautilus. <laughs> He's just involved in every single fight that T1, or rather the Hunter Life, is opting into. Good and side stuff you mentioned from Guma, otherwise this is even worse. Yeah, and I, I was doubting the, the Nautilus uh, Zeri, but the way they played it into the, the center Scion lane was just beautiful, you know? Like, just, just opt in to River Nautilus, you know? Get him around the map, get him involved. And you mentioned already, I mean, he's still sitting at 100% kill participation. This guy is, like you say, he's just everywhere. And and the the skirmish that T1 opted into on that dragon, like you got the dragon steel, be happy with that. I mean, that when we rewind this game, that is what the big story is about. That's when you start to see this map turn, or this gold graph turn red. It's been getting redder since, as Delight was roaming the entire time, but once Viper became online, they just have this kill squad. And it's so difficult to deal with, with this Jax that's also starting to really be a big threat as well. He just runs forward with the, the follow-up stun for anyone that Delight hooks, and then Viper just wipes them off the map. It's a Chemtech soul, so T1 leading the Dragons here doesn't even feel that significant either. No, it's not exactly the greatest. And we almost have Infinity Edge completed for Viper. When that third item is done, this area is going to be so scary. And with Leandri's now complete for Zekka, they can threaten Baron very effectively. Their Baron damage extremely high with the two damage dealers that they have. On top of Jax, who does a decent amount as well. They'll start this one up. It is dangerous. And full vision was given over to T1. Of course, you can still press that destiny button if you would like to. And so there they go. Um, I have already backed away from this one. There is a kick forward. Good Arctic Assault there, but Doran's still going down so incredibly low. Delight also having to flash away. There's a flash Empress Divide, but it's whipped entirely from Zekker, and T1 will punish immediately. Now Viper still trying to get damage down, able to buffer that gold card nicely, but now with a man advantage, T1, they might just move over to the Baron themselves. Oh man, Zekka's going to be feeling that one tomorrow. He better stay <laughs> off the internet for a little while, as that was such a cool idea. But the rest of his team was clearly backing out. He goes for it anyways. Now, Hollow Life, they're not just going to go quietly to that good night. They've got a fed Zeri. Oh, yeah. They're going to contest. These extended beams are scary. There is the hook in, but he's not as tanky as he was last game. And Delight will just immediately get punished. Enot has flash. Yeah, they want to try and get on in here. Doran's at full health now as Viper has pressed that ultimate button. This is kind of a Zeri fight, and he's going to take out Zayas first. Into the pit they go, but the Baron is still going to go over to T1. So still their advantage, and Zekka will teleport in, but it's a bit too late. Yeah, I'm, I'm not super happy with the handling there from Hanwa of this scenario because they basically just opted into losing Peanut there. He didn't even commit to flash in. They didn't have enough control to actually look for the contest there. And yes, it's a fed Zeri, but you just don't have vision. You don't have any way of getting into the pit and consistently doing that damage. You don't have any lockdown for anybody. So uh, poor Zekka. As owners up here in the front line, Santa Ultimate is pretty high value. The kick actually buys yeah. enough time for them to retreat away. And then it's a really good flash there from owner. And Zekka just completely whiffs and just throws himself into the bin. And then as T1 start to do the Baron, like the angle here is not great. If if Peanut was actually in the pit or had flashed in earlier, maybe he ends up getting the steal and gives his life for it. But it's like he's deciding whether he wants to actually commit to living or whether he wants to commit to the Baron. And he will not flash to the pit, nor will he live. As Viper does end up taking out Zayas, so that's one consolation prize they do end up getting here. But the teleport commitment as well from Zekka, who doesn't have ult, is just a little bit sus. Yeah, uh, was definitely very well handled by Ona, just over the wall, back and forth, back and forth, making sure that uh, Peanut wasn't able to get anything done. The best way to guarantee that you can take the Baron is by killing the enemy jungler, and that is precisely what he did. And now you can see that uh, gold graph moving back towards Homolife Esports. IE done for Viper with that fifth kill. It's the Viper story, you know, with this roster always. Yeah. It's going to be me to carry again, isn't it? And we'll see whether he actually can do so, of course. As you mentioned, I mean, the gold like it, it is just base gold from the Baron once again. I feel like we've just we're having a mirrored game this time around. 44 seconds on this Chemtech Drake. And Summer Life Esports just trying not to take too much poke damage. There is the back to come through from Gumiyushi. 
Baker does complete his uh, Maw, does take a lot of damage from Zekka, but not so much from Viper if he does end up getting ulted on. So he has to be really careful about how he wants to use his packages here. And he may just simply opt into the fights they know they have guaranteed Pryo on to avoid getting packaged at whatsoever. Whoa, there's another flash forward here as Empress Divide is going to be used just to get Zayas out of here. The ulti comes through from Viper. He does do a lot of damage, but T1, the Phalanx is being put together. And there goes Zekka once again. Oh, feels like Zekka, that play from earlier on. Kind of got into his head, perhaps, but it was a good pick off from T1 nonetheless. Thorin's going to teleport top here to try to trade turrets as T1 used the last 20 seconds of this Baron. to push mid. Baker is going to come over and try to deal with him in this side, but it is a Jax inside. He's looking for Baker, actually. I don't know about yeah. this. Baker is going to have to flash, but there's a flash through from Doran. Dawning Shadow does come down, but there is another leap strike. And Doran gets himself out. and. Okay, Doran. <laughs> I mean, that's, uh, he's starting to become scary. Yeah, that was a very scary moment there for Baker, but he also could have just perhaps looked to focus down the turret instead, but it's a trade of flashes you'll take as the Jax has a little bit of inherent mobility versus this Corky, who has his own, but a pretty long cooldown and one that you have to hold when you're holding package. Doran is just constantly putting this pressure on. Given it his teleport for this, and I don't feel like it has been a waste necessarily, but he's not getting the value he wanted. As T1 just calmly takes soul point, Warren's gonna get out of here is maybe a backstop. <laughs> yeah, Peanut is just being as frustrating as possible and succeeding. These games just don't breathe, do they, Atlas? No, they don't. And <laughs> I, I'm not gonna lie, I, just, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't prepared for this level of intensity. It's neck and neck again. I swear 26 minutes in game one, it was the same thing. Yeah, it was like nine and nine. I remember you calling out the kill yeah. score and we were like, well, it's anyone's game. Uh, obviously, there are really strong win conditions here for both teams this time around. You know, you have the Corky coming online here. The Senna is stacking up, even though it wasn't a very high impact game for the Scion early. He still farms, right? He still uses gold very efficiently and will, of course, infinitely scale, as you mentioned. Makaria will be a lot more relevant later on. And Zekka, you know, he ended up hitting his two item spike, but has since kind of, uh, you know, made some interesting choices that have led to his demise. Yeah, and it's all about, it's like Viper versus Faker and Guma in this one. Yeah, and uh, I was actually a little bit puzzled earlier on today because we saw the break screen and normally it's like the lane matchups that's there. You know, you've got Viper versus Death or something like that. This time around, it was actually Faker versus Viper. And now I've realized why, because that's precisely what this game is all about. Yeah. And Faker so far, you know, he does have that third item spike completed now. It took him a little bit longer because he went for the Maul. Is a very good choice into Zeko, obviously, in, in this uh, game. There's a lot of other AP sources. You saw the lifeline popped by Doran moments ago. But uh, now he's really going to be a huge threat in these neutral fights here. Yeah. The Baron being the, the next big objective to spawn that both teams are really going to be focused on in T1. He's already setting up deep vision for this. You can see Zeka, yeah, just on that bottom side of the map, does have teleport at the ready. Doran doesn't have his. That's why Zeka is spending time in the bottom lane. A little bit of a gank attempt there from T1. 44 minute, uh, seconds prior to this Baron. Ooh, Pina. She could be in trouble. This might to break the shield. Does manage to find the ulti. And boom goes the dynamite. Six and zero now for Viper. And Hummer Life Esports, they can have control of the river. How do you like that blast cone, Valdez? That's a <laughs> I have seen pigs fly. <laughs> I've seen pigs fly right now on my screen, right, right there. There's no disengage cone this time. A T1 fan said maybe Peanut will fly. <laughs> maybe when pigs fly, I'll see that Peanut. Said you want to come over there and punish my Guma, but uh, Pigs did fly and Guma did die. Six kills for Viper. Hanwha Life at a very critical moment end up picking the enemy 80 carry here. Now they have a free Baron take, or rather start. Not a take that, not just yet. Zekka has his ultimate available. Faker does have um, TP. Yeah, package also going to be picked up here. So he can teleport to the wave on the top side of the map. Hanwha Life Esports going to back away from the Baron. Not wanting to deal with that, especially with the package available. Is now Carrier going to get engaged on? There is a hook that's going to land. He is so tanky, though. Uh, not going to be necessarily a target that you can burst down. Still, they get the destiny out from Zeus, who is now just going to turn his attention back towards this Baron one more time as well. He's found his way in behind enemy lines. Good zoning smash there from Carrier, but they're losing control quickly as Viper is level 16. Yeah, package is going to be delivered just to Peanut here as it was probably wearing off. And now Delight going to answer with that death charge. The flash over from Viper, the assassin Zeri. And Owner is going to kick him away, but it's not going to be anything that's actually able to help out here. Is now Carrier taking damage. Owner will be.
be taken down. There goes the jungler, and T1 are falling apart. Somehow that Glacial Prison connects onto Carrier, and now five versus three. Harmalife Esports will start off the Baron. Another hook is going to connect Sekka. on Isaias, and Sekka is going to make up for that ultimate from earlier. Peanut finds the Arcasol Flash, and Zayas will be taken down. His opposite number picking up the double, and there's the Baron for Harmalife. On will life esports gonna take this baron and with it control over the map for the foreseeable future if not for the rest of this game carrier very tanky see if he can get his way out of this one yeah I don't it's think a portal so. combat <laughs> here on the top side of the map doran is going to break that vow and Kerry is running the wrong direction. He is likely going to die here. His ult and is that coming up. will almost be the ace, uh, but it's not actually going to be the way. As now we're going to check this one out one more time. Uh, this is how it all On starts. On award, man. On yeah. award. On award. This is how it all starts off. Enoch comes over here, flies across, and they get the zap for the kill there. The extendo beam comes over. And then this fight, obviously, it's going to be very broken up. The package is no value. Um, it doesn't even look like it was a package at all because it's just used on the wall there and then Viper flashes for the kill. The fight's over at this moment. Like there is nothing else you can do as T1 as Guma is trying to kite back into the front line but owner is isolated and Guma is eventually going to get caught by Zekka as he does come in for this follow-up. As look at this, we'll watch it forward. If they're on the Baron, Guma's like, well, I have to do damage. And even with the long range he has, he's in range of an Emperor's Divide. And Zayas with some fancy footwork, but that was just clean play from Viper once again. He's taken this gold and being so efficient with it, so massive. 8-0 and 3, he's got his scimitar done. I don't know if the Zeri dies ever. Yeah, he is an absolute monster, and he definitely hasn't died so far this game. As there is a knock-up on a Peanut, and Peanut does not care about it whatsoever. 6,000 gold the lead for Hummel IP Sports. They denied the soul. That is not all that relevant because it's Chemtech Hook just barely going to whip there from Delight. As you can see, Zayas just trying to push out these waves so that Hamalife cannot get more than just this bottom inhibitor. But the damage has already been done. The map completely belonging to Hamalife at this stage of the game. And it looks like they're moving to match point. That is absolutely insane. Yeah. And. I mean, T1, the drafts haven't been bad by any means, but game one, they they had a problem with the Senna. They gave it over with Nautilus, which we've seen has such an incredible long uh, win streak. I think it's 11 now. And then you move into the second game, and you get the Nautilus, but you get the Scion with it, a muted lane there, and it's Peanut who makes big plays early. It's Delight roaming all over the map, and Honor Life just seem to be the stronger team so far here. Yeah, they just seem to have a lot of the answers as well. In the draft, you saw that they did not hesitate as soon as that center was locked in, they're like, all right, we've got Nautilus, we've got Sejuani, we're gonna play around that one. Then Viper Zeri comes in and we're like, oh, question marks, Nautilus Zeri, is that gonna work? But the gameplay around it was absolutely fantastic. You, you can see here by the damage dealt that playing around Viper is their bread and butter. They're gonna look for the engage on Carrier. He's very tanky, but his turret is now missing. He's now gonna look for a desperation engage and it should not work out here as he's going to be going down into zombie form. Surely, surely he is, never mind, he's not. He's just incredibly tanky. The hook, the kick, it's going to work out here, but the disengage has to come through and Hummel Life Esports, yeah, I mean, they managed to avoid <laughs> uh, dying to them, but look, they didn't do any damage. Yeah, it's, it's funny to watch the look on Peanut's face as well as everything is used by Guma and owner to keep Karia alive, but it's just a scion. You know, it's 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 not like you. It's a pick that's going to be the one that turns the fight around because it lived and it's going to go back to fountain and teleport on flank. I mean, he did have TP, but he already used his ult to get away. It's not like Carrier could have been like, "Aha, now checkmate." I <laughs> uh, teleport behind you, and we actually re-engage. Not going to happen this time around. As Peanut and Hanwell Life continue to get a lot of deep vision here as best as they can to continue the siege. Yeah, once again, Carrier able to get vision down this time, but Peanut's there to immediately eradicate the rift of it it's really hard here for you know t1 to come back in this game but it's also hard for hanwa to win it before the next baron you know i think the next baron is going to be where they try to close this one out yeah they don't have a lot of range they don't have exactly a lot of range right and they don't have you know an insane pushing composition either even with this azir and sundis turrets you know in terms of just engaging and finding picks and then turning the game on its head or rather finishing the game right in that moment it's very difficult to do unless T1 makes a mistake. So they're just putting up deep vision. All they want to do is control this Baron. They don't even need the Chemtex uh, Dragon to come over. It's not even soul for them. And if, if T1 gets the soul, I don't think they care as much. They probably will contest that vision. 
But the Baron is really where they end the game, so that's what their main focus is going to be. Yeah, six items now for Viper. He has Flame Horizon everyone on the map. Uh, it is absolutely ridiculous. Depth Charge is going to come on through, but there is that Disengage Cone. Validation for Valdez. Uh, and that is going to deny any sort of pick here for Hummer Life Esports. Definitely great news for T1, though. If they had lost their jungler there, could have been dangerous. Although, I think he probably would have been back up and available for these objectives to come up. It is still very intense, but it does still feel like Hummer Life Esports have broken through that first layer and are now just looking to try and take this victory home. Doran going to push this wave in. Obviously, there's super minions on the opposite side of the map to where the Baron is, which is super frustrating for T1 to deal with. They have Faker's TP, they have Carrier's TP, so someone will be able to deal with that, but super minions are a bit of an issue here for the next minute 20. And Hanwha Life has such insane Baron damage right now. Yeah. They can kill it so quickly. They put up the Sun Desk gear, and they have basically permanent prio all over the map. Viper is level 18. <laughs> they have deep yeah. vision from, from top to bottom here across T1's jungle. Viper hit 18 before Doran did. Yeah. It's uh, it's kind of ridiculous. He is uh, highest level in the game as Delight is going to find Zeus. In goes Doran as well, and they will be able to lock him down. Gumiyushi, he just pops like a balloon, but still, Delight taking a lot of damage. The package delivered. Ona looks for the opportunity. Empress Divide avoided, but he can't avoid the prison. And now Faker has to flash away. He does manage to take down the Jack. The extended beam avoided as well, but he's still moving the wrong direction. I don't think it's going to be enough to save them. It's only three kills. TP. And Baker might be able to keep himself alive, but Peanut is going to come on over. He flashes. He doesn't <laughs> manage to lock him down. As you mentioned, the teleport out from Faker. But still, Hummel Life Esports now, they've got Nexus turrets in their eyes, and they've got a match point that they're looking to secure. They could just go back and take Baron here. Very uh, funny series of events. You know, the fact that they try to flash on Faker to stop his TP, the fact that he gets out, means that T1 actually have these respawns coming through here, and there's no end from Hanwha Life Esports, nor do they get the Baron. And this is a really nice attempt here, I think, for T1, all things considered, considering where they are in this game. The game state is so against them here. To try to turn this around with package, but this desperation is just simply not going to work. Not enough damage here. Delight is just tanky enough here, even though it's support Nautilus. And Baker, yeah, he does get out with his life here. Sidestep is insane. I don't know how that sidestep even worked. It didn't look like he honest. avoided it, but yeah. it, but I guess he did. Yeah, not fair. Uh, that is just goat things. Sometimes you just better. He sees the ones and zeros. <laughs> yeah, he does. And so far he's seeing the zero one in his scoreline, but he wants to change that narrative here on this Baron fight. They do no. have another fight in him. Wolf. Yeah. That's 6,000 gold to lead. Um, but we have seen already in this series, I don't think the gold really matters all that much. Both of these teams now with Soul Point available. But the Soul inhibitor has respawned as well, so T1 are allowed on the map. So many tools that aren't available for T1. No package, no flash for Faker, no flash for anyone but Caria. Yeah. And Honda Life Esports just put Doran in the top lane, continue to push this. And this is checkmate. Yeah, well, there's the control ward. It goes down. Zayas is going to get knocked up, and there is nothing he could do about it. Viper, 9 0 and 4 on the Zeri. He has gone from problem to disaster for T1 and Hummel Life Esports are going to head towards this Baron pit and look to try and push for the final time. If you're a believer in the butterfly effect. If you're a believer in, in dominoes falling over. It all started on that poor dragon take from T1 where owner got the smite steal but Zeri got two kills and you once certified it Wolf and once that certification goes through it is very difficult to take it away. And I don't want to take anything away from Delight either because I feel like this was his game. He oh, yeah. ruled the Rift and set up Viper in so many ways, set up Doran in so many ways. And now the Baron is going to be the siege to end here. I, I see no world in which T1 defend this. And look at how quickly everything goes down. Viper with six items is no joke. Doran going to help take down this inhibitor turret as well. He's a damage threat on top of it all. And inhibs. All just going to be removed. It is textbook play here from Hummel Life Esports. And T1, their map has all of a sudden gotten extraordinarily small. Zonia's for Zeka, Zonia's for Doran. There's no way to mess this up if you play it carefully in Hanwha R. Yeah, they're doing the very best. Carrier has a gigantic help bar, but he just can't really do anything else to stop Hummel Life Esports from uh, getting on in here, making things happen. Guardian Angel done for Viper, so they're going to have to kill him twice in this fight if they are actually going to be able to hold on to this game. But you can see there are multiple Siege minions 
still bearing down on the base. And now Doran goes in. He finds the counter strike on Tezaeus. And now Zeka gets in there. The explosion of damage is now they're in range of Viper. And that means that it's Hanwell IV Sports in range of winning this series with match points now available. Hanwell Life showing up in a big way in this best of five. One win away from joining Gen G, the top of the bracket for round three, to break the T1 Gen G narrative to say the number three put the put number two to the test at the end of regular season came in. I think in a lot of fans' minds as underdogs, a lot of analysts went both ways. It was very, very close. We knew a lot of it was going to come down to T1's read of the meta and form on the day. And I think Hanwha Life is coming up so far with both. Their form on the day and their draft reads into both oh, picking yeah. and giving the Senna have been what have defined this series so far. Viper walks away from <laughs> game two with 40,000 damage on the Zeri. That's a thousand DPM almost exactly on this Zeri. He was funneled all of the money. Like Hamalai Life Esports, they had this clear plan and he was able to grab those couple of kills in the first skirmish, but the way that they just they saw their composition, they knew exactly how they wanted to play it out, and it all just worked out on top of it. This is a juggernaut of a team, and we'll see whether T1 can topple them and try and work on a reverse sweep. It's dangerous, but it's possible. Let's go to a short break, then the space, and then game three.